This is Nitin Jahad with the Times. I'm here at October Tech uh, 2025 with Infineon Technologies. And I'm talking to Maher Mata. Hello, Maher. Hello, Nitin. Good to be here. And Andres Urschitz. Now, you're CMO and you're, you're uh, heading the Americas, is that right? That is correct. Okay. So um, uh, I'm, I'm going to start with you, um, uh, Andres. Tell me a little bit about October Tech. And I, I know I covered this last year, but I think it's quite a nice bit in perspective because you've been here like since, like it's 25 years since your IPO. Uh, you've been here pretty much all the time. So October Tech uh, for us was a major step in order to get truly embedded in the Silicon Valley. This year is the epicenter of innovation over decades, in particular in the semiconductor space and systems, microelectronic systems built around it. So the modern way we're all used to live uh, within AI at the left, uh, software-defined vehicles, autonomous driving on the right-hand side, uh, then our fully automated homes, and so that all stems from here. So being here for us always used to be super important as a company in Finian, and, and thus we also established the so-called October Tech, which is a flagship event and uh, a platform, if you will, to bring innovators beyond Silicon Valley together to work on a better future. And, and, and just to get that context of beyond Silicon Valley, you have taken this around the globe, haven't you? Uh, absolutely. Uh, Maha, what were your takes on this? It has indeed. I mean, it started in the Valley. I've been here about, uh, this is our ninth year. About three years ago, uh, uh, three years in, it's it migrated to South Korea, Japan, Shanghai, and it's uh, Singapore, I think, as well. So it goes global. So, so Maha, I'm going to ask you a little bit. Um, what are your, your, your sort of uh, areas of focus for you in, uh, in this year's event for October 10th? Yeah, I mean, what I really like about this year's event is it's showing the evolution. If you look at our early events, they tend to be fairly centered in three areas, sensors and power, automotive, kind of these three main areas. Now you see the breadth of Infineon's portfolio. For the first time, we're showing our Ethernet solutions. It's a new acquisition. Quantum gets bigger. So as these new technologies come out, we're really excited to showcase them at these events because they're all really innovative and they address the future. Now, in, in the keynotes, well, in the, the presentations today, uh, the focus was on humanoid robotics, it was on um, energy, uh, and we also had a bit of quantum. Um, that's, that's kind of portrayed in all of this, isn't it? It, it is, it is. I mean, the, the robotics, is it, it's a beautiful melding of multiple things we talked about. Everything from AI to connectivity to motor control, uh, so yes, it's, it really showcased that. And then, um, uh, Andres, yeah, what are the, uh, like, let's just give a little bit of context and perspective. What are the key highlights for Infineon over the last 12 months? Yeah, so first and foremost, uh, Infineon uh, became unprecedented number one in microcontrollers. That is something which uh, never ever had been envisioned by others. I always had it in my mind and uh, finally we made it. So. Based on our strong position in automotive microcontrollers, where we became again number one, we're now number one in automotive, industrial, and consumer microcontrollers. Other than this, uh, we continue to and uh, were confirmed number one position in power semiconductors. Power semiconductors comprising uh, all the best of it: so silicon-based power switches, uh, drivers, and also controllers, gallium nitride, and last not least, also silicon carbide. And Last not least, also in the area of security, we were confirmed and again continue to be number one and in days of post-quantum secure uh, devices, that is something which plays a very important role going forward for all of our customers who want to work with us. You know, it's interesting this morning when I uh, uh, talked about post-quantum security and he said, it's all very well having the post-quantum security, but you need to make sure nobody gets the keys. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, then those you have to hide away carefully. Yeah. And, and yeah, I mean, what, with all this happening over the last 12 months, so you also had things like the 300 mm GAN and, and everything else. And there's a lot going on already, isn't there? No, absolutely. And the 300 mm GAN is just in fingers logical continuation in terms of leadership in power semiconductors and defining energy efficiency of today, but even more so tomorrow. Since energy is a scarce resource, uh, we have to be uh, careful with how we handle uh, electricity without producing any waste. So therefore, Gallium nitride is uh, essential and getting gallium nitride into 300 millimeter manufacturing capacity, that is the key to provide gallium nitride performance at the price 
of silicon fats of the past. And the other thing I think just want to highlight is, you know, the battery storage or the battery, you know, you're talking about how that's actually evolving quite quickly as well. Yeah, absolutely. So battery is something where uh, we see very, very steep falling uh, price points, price per a kilowatt hour for a battery. And that is something which is of enormous importance for this decentralization of renewable power in particular. So we hear so much about this, about decentralized grids uh, and uh, having batteries that can then also locally store power that comes from wind, for instance, so when the wind stops blowing, and even more so power that stems from solar, solar panel fields. Uh, the battery is the key ingredient which has now reached cost points or cost per watt storage, which makes it economically super meaningful and commercially senseful to go after uh, solar energy made uh, at, uh, at scale and not to forget. So in the meantime, we reached a cost point of uh, one cent per kilowatt hour that stems from solar. So I believe that is one of the key ingredients going forward, why solar will come big time, uh, even though uh, discussion may at the moment on broadcast station can be uh, at a momentum, but it is not so. so. No, I, I mean, when you mentioned that stat, I had to bring it out because that, to me, it was quite impressive yeah, in terms of that cost of energy. No, absolutely. And we are part of that as uh, Infineon as a company. So we are uh, defining, if you will, system architectures based on our semiconductors, such as silicon carbide, gallium nitride, uh, silicon-based control circuitry, which then allows uh, effective management of of uh, batteries, uh, which allows them to connect batteries uh, in two directions. So battery towards the grid, but also battery towards uh, a decentral DC grid. If you think about, uh, for instance, a uh, AI data center and so on and so forth, and we have it all. So everything that relates to power semiconductors, customers love to buy from Infineon. Maybe I build a, on that as topic because a battery piece is not just as a resource to be charged, the fact that it, you can go bi-directional with it, with a bi-directional GAN switch, for example, now allows you to also multitask it, right? You can have vehicle, more and more vehicles are giving you that ability. Infineon is a leader in being able to have this GAN bi-directional switch. We've gone into production with that, and one of our lead customers is deploying it for that application. Either to connect to the grid to the house, or the vehicle to the home. So, it's a multifaceted problem that has many different angles and we can contribute. In oh, uh, something I heard this morning in one of the talks was uh, the, the EV has become a, a storage uh, device on, on wheels or, or on the move, something, yeah. No, it is, uh, actually it is uh, an absolutely huge business case going forward. So this entire bi-directional switching capability, if you think about your car at home, so the EV, uh, I just uh, have a friend of mine who contacted me, uh, so he lives in Denmark, and he uh, used to own an electric car who has that capability and he proudly told me uh, that uh, his utility company uh, approached him and offered 1,500 euro per year to rent out his battery for overnight storage and grid stabilization to the utility provider. So this is something that is I also want to get hold of. That is brilliant. And, and yeah, Denmark has been advanced in EV deployment. So absolutely. Um, okay, Maher. Yes. I think, um, I'm going to ask you to uh, highlight one or two demos that you, you want to highlight. I know there's too many, and last year we talked about 90 plus. This year is probably... That's only 45, we said. He said, concentrate. Uh, so yes, we have 45. I'll pick two. I'm going to pick two of my favorite children. One is the solid state transformer. Revolutionary technology being enabled by Infineon really to address a, a core grid problem. Uh, and so I definitely take a look at that. The other one we touched on earlier, uh, AI at the edge. It's finally here. We have now design rooms with people deploying AI at the edge, so don't miss that one. So let me build on this. Uh, so if you want to see one of the world's first meaningful mini MPUs, go and see our booth. I think I saw it this morning. We interviewed Thomas. So uh, we, we were going to be running that as well. Very good. Uh, OK, I'm going to ask you both. Um, uh, Maher. Last, any last words, yeah. any last thoughts about what's going on? Look, what you see behind you is what our technology is all about. Innovation will continue, technology will continue. The way we advance is by collaborating with partners and customers, and that's what we're doing here. So for me, I love it. This is business as usual for us. And Andreas, I think uh, 
you are so excited. I can see much, so much passion. Tell me, what, what do you want to sort of close in on for? We love to be innovators and we love to jointly making the difference here in the Silicon Valley with all these ecosystem players surrounding us so for a better future. Well, Maher, Andres, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.